All right, perfect. All right, everybody, thanks for having here. I'm just gonna get everything set up here, get it recorded. I know a lot of people are doing the playback. So here we go. Whenever you're ready, Jordana. Wonderful. Hello and welcome everyone and welcome to Admin Tech Talk, reflecting on tech issues over the last year. We're so glad that you could all be here today. My name is Jordana Taylor, and I serve as the membership strategist at the National Association of Secondary School Principals. And before we get started, I'd like to share just a little bit about NASSP and some of the upcoming events and opportunities that we have. One moment. And so as you can see here, um, we just wanted to just thank those of you who are current NASSP members. And just to share a little bit about us, uh, the National Association of Secondary School Principals is the leading professional organization for middle level and high school principals, assistant principals, and other school leaders across the United States and beyond. And here at NASSP, we are cultivating a generation of courageous school and student leaders to reimagine and rebuild an education system that meets every student's needs by providing equitable access and opportunity. So whether you're a current member or interested in learning more, please connect with me. You can see my contact information on the slide or you can follow that QR code or link and we're happy to get connected to learn more. And finally, we are really excited that over 3,000 fellow school leaders are joining us this July 15th through 17th at the United Conference in Nashville, Tennessee. It's designed for principals and assistant principals. The United Conference is a great opportunity for us to come together as a community of K through 12 administrators to connect, engage, and inspire one another. Hear from inspiring thought leaders like Jimmy Cassis, John Sanfilippo, Robin Jackson, and more on a lot of the trends and insights that are shaping the landscape of education. So I encourage you to visit us online at nassp.org backslash united to browse the full agenda and grab your ticket. And we hope to see you there. With that, I wanted to go ahead and introduce the moderator of today's panel discussion, Mary Pat Cumming. Mary Pat. Thanks, Jordana. Uh, Mary Pat Cumming, proud principal of the Fair School for Arts in Minneapolis Public Schools. Um, and I'm also a very proud member of the NASSP Board of Directors. I just want to echo what Jordana was just saying about United. We're very excited about, about uh, what's going to happen at the United Conference. And I'm also thrilled to be with you today for Admin Tech Talk uh, to lead this panel. Um, I'm going to pass it right now to Kim Carr uh, to introduce um, a little bit about uh, Digital for Good. Kim? Yeah, super excited that uh, we got people here to talk about this because I know this is a hot topic to be able to have that. But our nonprofit has been around for 10 years. And so we change our company to Digital for Good. Just to that how you can get your community to use Digital for Good. It's three ways you can help. It is to educate to with our curriculum, our courses, and our trainings, it can help, which is our events, our social media platform to get people engaged. And the last one is it is to I can help empower, getting your students to be involved, getting mentors to be involved from different companies uh, to get everybody to be using using Digital for Good. So please come join us. We've got the results that are there. This is kind of the roadmap to get people to use Digital for Good because we just know you can't just be no devices. This is the world that we're in. And um, I'm super honored that we've got people here wanting to have conversations about it to be able to keep making schools safer and better uh, to be able to help students be, to, do, to, to stay focused on their education. Thank you, Kim. I'd like to go ahead and introduce the panelists uh, with us this afternoon. Uh, we are um, gifted to have uh, three educators with us this afternoon who are principal leaders in their own buildings um, with all having expertise in the area of technology. So I'd like to first um, introduce to you, James Ulrich. James, do you wanna just say hello to everybody and add a couple comments? Absolutely. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Ulrich, principal here at Argyle Magnet Middle School. Uh, we are a whole tech, whole tech school magnet. Um, in essence, any students who walk through our doors participate in our in our magnet. And I'm excited to be here to uh, discuss and engage in a collaborative conversation around AI. Thank you so much, James. And and next we have uh, Brad Baker, Dr. Brad Baker. Brad, would you like to just add some comments too? Sure. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for having me. Uh, just as James uh, 
said, uh, I'm just looking forward to the collaborative conversation and hopefully things that we're learning on, on the uh, ground floor uh, will help others in, uh, in the um, in integration of AI in education. Thank you. And finally, we have John Bird. John, uh, you want to just jump in? Uh, our assistant principal here, vice principal on our panel today. Sure. Um, John Bird, I'm a vice principal in New Jersey um, in a small school of about 400-ish students. Um, and we're dealing daily with the impacts of AI and, and new tech. And I'm excited to be part of the conversation. Thanks, John. Um, we are thrilled again to have uh, all three of you with us and really to, to discuss a topic that is a hot topic, as, as Kim said, but um, I think getting hotter uh, as, as time goes on and as we wrestle with it as principal leaders um, within our schools. And tech issues we know over the last year, um, our, our, this, this uh, forum format has allowed us to, to have those conversations. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper um, today into AI. Um, because we know that that's a topic that is affecting our schools on a daily basis. Um, and we wanna just jump right in with question number one. So um, we'll go ahead and, and, and talk about the question here. What are current tech issues that are surrounding AI that are impacting uh, your school setting? And I'm gonna ask uh, um, uh, James, if you wanna jump in first um, and then we'll kind of rotate around with our uh, responses. So James, why don't you go ahead? Absolutely. Um, when, so when it comes to, to tech issues, uh, particularly around AI, probably the biggest one that we're seeing right now is just how much, again, I'm on the middle school level, but just how much teachers want to invest, dive in um, into this, this AI space. Um, what we're finding is that we have teachers who are all in and really want to and have tried um, different um, AI platforms and apps and things of that nature. And then we have other teachers who just won't touch it. Um, I, I, on the ground level, as you know, we've taken one of our um, staff seminars and it's a topic we've been talking quite a bit about, but more recently we spent an entire staff meeting, staff seminar, and really just looking at AI. What is it? What does it look like? And things of that nature. Um, obviously the topics that come up quite a bit is around the fear for the fear around cheating and um, students use. So we've been having some conversations around it, but I would say the biggest issue um, that for us is just, you know, whether or not teachers are willing to really jump in um, or step out. But we see really just really two major camps of teachers who say, absolutely not. And again, I'm at a tech magnet, right? And you know, they're used to using computers they're comfortable. This is supposed to be, in my opinion, the teachers who are just really about the technology. Um, but even what I found is even they get very comfortable in saying, hey, this technology I'm comfortable with, this AI stuff, I'm not so sure. Thanks. Thanks so much for surfacing those things, especially uh, teachers who are reluctant, uh, right? Because we've got those early adopters and then we have those we're going to have to bring along. Uh, Brad, you want to jump in uh, on this? Sure. Yeah, I was just piggyback on what James, one of the things he said with the, the plagiarism. I mean, I think that's the first thing that's going to come out um, because, you know, students are, are you know, leveraging this tool as, as quick, quicker than our teachers are being able to understand it. Um, and so uh, it's, it's easy for a lot of students to go and uh, kind of take a shortcut um, with assignments that you know, have been assigned for years. Um, so it's easy to dump in some good prompts and, and get a product. Um, and then one of the main issues too is, um, is these AI detectors are, uh, they're not without flaws. And so uh, what happens and, and really there are disclaimers, but they're kind of deep into these programs. Um, but what happens is a lot of times a student may turn something in um, and it'll come back with a certain percentage of uh, plagiarism, um, and it might not be 100% accurate. So that, in a sense, could really hurt, you know, school climate, student-teacher relationship. So I think it's real important for us to um, really require some more training and professional development um, with these tools. Um, we have easy access to them, but again, knowing how to use them and then invest in teacher training and professional development really to build 
you know, educators capacity uh, to integrate AI. Uh, but right now, like I said, the uh, plagiarism piece is, is we're educating teachers and students um, uh, about that. Um, and then also, you know, instructional practices too that will um, uh, leverage yeah, it. Somebody told her. Yeah, I got She's, she's the one who went. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, say, uh, can we make sure that you're muted when you enter in here? I see someone's joined us. Thank you so much. That that's great. Awesome. And and thank you, Brad. You know, you you surfaced again. You know, like you said, echoing a little bit about what James was saying in particular on, um, you know, leveraging uh those that are ready, right? And 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 those that are reluctant, along with that PD, that's going to be really important. Um. You know, uh, John, I think you have a, a maybe a little bit different perspective on this from what we shared earlier about some of the issues that are affecting your school. Yeah, so um, I, I'll first echo, right? It, it started with the plagiarism, um, you know, 100% um, where teachers started realizing that, um, you know, students were all of a sudden writing much better than they had been in the past, um, you know, so... And I think we're still kind of figuring that part out as far as how to how to um, prove plagiarism versus um, a student's uh, own work. Um, but I'll, I'll go kind of further into the conduct side of it with, um, you know, we're really concerned right now um, about the um, possibility of, of deep fakes and, and stuff along those lines, um, especially the... Um, the potential for uh, graphic content assigned to students, um, you know, we, we've dealt with, as I'm sure many schools, all schools have, with um, internet bullying, harassment, et cetera. And now you throw in the ability to, um, you know, turn somebody's picture and whatever into whatever you want it to be and put it out there for society to see. Um, you know, it's it's deeply concerning from a conduct standpoint, a mental health standpoint, a, a an in-building um, culture standpoint. So, um, you know, knock on wood, luckily we, we haven't had that here, um, but we have had it uh, close by. And, um, you know, we're trying to figure out now how to best prepare for that. Yeah, it really sets the stage for our conversation. Um, the, the, the issues that have come up here, both, the, you know, all the way from the plagiarism and then the behaviors um, as well. And the questions that we have uh, today are going to address and kind of Kind of um, attack all, all all of those topics. Hopefully, as we as we work through them. So, I think we can go ahead and move to the next question, um, which really is, you know, how can AI be used to enhance um, the student engagement and personalized learning experiences within um, your schools? And and I'm gonna maybe uh, just kind of um, have Brad go first on this question, if you would, Brad. Sure. Um, well, I've been doing a little research on this, and I think. Uh, there's gonna be some incredible um, supports, especially when it comes to intelligent tutoring systems. Uh, I think that's where we can leverage uh, the most help for all of our students. You know, we talk always about ensuring that we're in, you know, all students are learning, uh, but when you're 36 to one, right, as a teacher, but how can we leverage the tutoring systems? Um, I have did a little digging on Khan Academy as a new tutoring system, Kamingo, I think it is. Uh, and, and just playing around with that, I'm like, wow, this is really incredible. It's just not dumping out information for the students. It's actually having um, really a natural language conversation with the student. And uh, I think that is going to be very helpful uh, moving forward. If we can learn to leverage uh, these uh, intelligent tutoring systems, um, it's really going to help our teachers, it's going to help our students, and, and ultimately our community. I think the thing we have to be wary of is that you know, all students will have access to these things and not just the students of means and those types of things. So making sure equity and access is, is in mind. Great. Hey, James, I'm wondering if you, you know, what your thoughts are on that, especially since you're in a, you know, a school that that's all, you know, all tech. Um, uh, can you want to uh, kind of um, add some thoughts on that? Yes. I mean, I think, you know, when I'm starting to realize and I'm learning more and more this year, that is when, our staff are talking about tech. Um, oftentimes it is just the use of some form of technology, not always AI. Um, so AI adds really another twist to things, uh, mainly because it's so new and it's changing so quickly. Now, to, to that point, um, what I've found to be 
you know, quite beneficial around the, the AI uses that we've seen teachers or so in our school, we have um, a grading and reporting policy that allows students to make up assignments or quizzes particularly. And um, before AI, so prior to this year, maybe even, you know, a little bit after COVID, we had lots and lots of concerns around the amount of time it is taking for teachers to actually recreate these quizzes um, or assignments for students to actually show their understanding. Um, now with the use of AI, they're able to do that right, you know, rather quickly. They're able to also produce several different quizzes in one particular class that they were pushing it out digitally, or um, they're able to say, hey, instead of saying I have to now recreate this, they can use AI to, to actually recreate it. What we're finding is that um, students are doing better and we're finding more student engagement, if you will. Um, a tool that we've adopted here, and you know, I don't work for the company at all, but IXL has been quite beneficial um, with our students. We've adopted it in our math classes. And what we're finding is that um, students who may be struggling um, in certain areas, they can jump into IXL and it will adjust. And this is not unique to IXL, but it will adjust as needed for the for the student. Um, Khan Migo already came up. Um, um, that's another tool um, that students are dibbling and dabbling in. Um, that's not a tool that we've adopted as a district. IXL is one of those tools we've adopted. Um, but all of those spaces are spaces where we're seeing kind of this kind of personalized kind of learning uh, piece as well as um, just enhance around student engagement. And they also say, you know, making life a little bit easier for teachers to really focus in on the instructional piece um, and less, I mean, well, the engagement piece around students and less around just lesson planning and things of that nature. I'll add another piece that's um, that's also coming to mind is that um, we're starting to see teachers, and again, teachers who are embracing AI to take, a, take things a step further with the type of assignments that they're accepting. So, it's not just enough just to write the paper. They need to maybe add a presentation with that or something else that is not just written where it can be produced. So they actually have to, let's just say they were to do use AI, right? Uh, they would still have to actually come up and present their understanding of it. Uh, again, I think increasing the engagement, um, uh, kind of the fact, you know, not really because they intended for that to happen, but it's happening because maybe they're not trusting the, the text that, are, that the students are producing. So I'm not gonna throw a lot out there. Um, and I'm not saying this is happening throughout our entire building, um, but as I'm watching the early adopters jump in, I'm starting to see some different things happen. I, I love kind of what both of you have just said that kind of, kind of bringing that together on the personalized learning part, right? Um, really kind of individualizing that instruction. It, it makes it so much easier, especially in the remediation area. Um, and also what you were saying, James, about, you know, I, I, I'm looking at it as project-based learning in a way. Um, so they're, they're, they're bringing in the one idea in text form, right? But that project-based learning is really expanding that. Um, and, and students are able, I'm thinking, what I'm hearing you say is like, they're able to do that in so many different ways. Um, whether that's, like you said, through a PowerPoint presentation or through some kind of other way to demonstrate, maybe it's even an artistic manner, but but it doesn't just stop at the text part, um, which I think really um, goes to what you're saying about the engagement and the personalized learning. Um, thank you both for uh, also you know providing a couple of different resources there, um, the IXL, and then I saw that uh, Brad put the uh, Conmingo in there in the chat as well. Those are going to be helpful resources. Um, to other principals as they're listening to this um, as well. So we can, I think we can probably go ahead and, and, and move on to, to question um, number three. Um, and this is really that policy, that, that really that policy part. I know that like in my own district right now, we're struggling with this. We're struggling with how do you create policy for the utilization of AI that then um, not only is it at the district level, but also at the individual building level. Um, and and different levels, right? Elementary, middle, and high school. So I'm curious about all of your thoughts here on the policies that are necessary to safeguard potential misuse or security risks that are associated with AI in schools. And um, if it's all right, I, uh, John, why don't you go ahead and uh, start on this one, if you would? Sure. Um, so 
you know, for us at this point, um, we're relying on past policy or, or already in place policy as a matter of um, combating AI. And I know that might seem counterproductive, but right now to, to imagine policy for all the places that AI can go would be way too difficult, right? It, it would be like the never ending. So we're trying to figure out with what AI can do and what students can do with it, where that falls amongst our current policy. Um, you know, so for instance, um, New Jersey, and I, I apologize, I don't know nationally, um, we have HIB laws, uh, harassment, intimidation, bullying, um, that are that are very strict. Um, you know, a lot of this, the things that will come out of AI will fall under that policy, right? Um, so we're definitely looking at it from that that lens. And then of course, also from the lens of of you know, misuse of technology and and um things along those lines. Um, you know, and then I, I think it's something that's going to be ever evolving, you know, and, and as issues come up, we're gonna to have to create policy to deal with it. Yeah, to completely agree. I think you're, the word ever evolving is exactly what we're going to be experiencing over over time here. Um, James or Brad, uh, you want to uh, add something in this area as well on policy? Yeah, I, I'll jump in. I mean, it sounds like many of us are in the same spaces. I'm, I'm in Silver Spring, Maryland, but our district is the largest, Montgomery County Public Schools, we're the largest district. Um, when we're still working through what this is going to look like now, I know one of the conversations that's already come up is, around on our on our board side, our board of education have been talking a lot about trying to come up with some AI policy. And then they felt like that was that just using that term AI was just too broad, right? And really thinking about it from this generative AI space, right? Because to to even limit AI, you're talking about limiting how we engage in emails, how we engage in um, you know, slide. I mean just so much uses AI that even before chat GBT or this generative AI tools were popular, we were using AI, right? So I think they didn't want to overreach in that policy. Um, so there's still conversations being had. The policy has not been uh, put out, but right now, uh, most of the AI platforms are being governed by existing kind of acceptable use policies and kind of student data privacy um, requirements. Uh, we did start in a space where we couldn't even like use our emails to, to do like chat GBT, um, uh, Gemini, but um, now teachers are able to do that. Students are still not able to do that. Um, but um, what we know is that students are you know, using their own emails and things of that nature to, to, to do these things. So districts, at least our district, is very much interested in coming up with some type of policy. They are very much aware that this is something that is really, really important, um, but haven't really figured out what that's looking like. Now, they've also are trying to put together a work group um, to pull this together. Um, and, and unfortunately, um, schools tend to find themselves in this kind of slow space because the AI is changing as we are talking right now. And it's almost feel like we're we're going to be creating policy for something that's going to be old. That's what it feels like. So trying to think about how do we create policy that's going to be expansive enough um, to include things that, that hasn't even been created, I think is, is going to be challenging. So I'll leave it there. Yeah, I agree. I think it's not only going to be challenge, challenging, but it, but at the same time, uh, we can't be paralyzed, right, by not doing anything, um, and and then allowing the train to to get further down the track before we've even kind of jumped in even a little bit. Thanks for th thanks for that. Um, yeah, Brad, thoughts from you on this? Yeah, all great thoughts. I, I think um, you know prioritizing student safety and teacher uh, education would be where I would start, right? Um, you know, looking at, sorry, that's the bell. <laughs> I'm really at school working with it. So, um, but I think we need to ensure the technologies are ethically used, right? And then um, really support teachers and in, in how to use them because they're out on a island if we don't um, come around them and, and provide them with support and training. Um, you know, we see it happen right now you know if someone turns something in the teacher needs to do the investigation and so we we need to continue uh, to lean on the policies we do have as john was saying because uh, we do have uh, you know behavior and expectation policy in place but we also need a 
a educated team, right, to always be meeting, I think, in our school districts and keeping up on what's coming out there. And, and, and I would start again with student safety um, and also ensuring uh, we don't broach even the privacy and those types of things, because that can be a slippery slope. So having committee that prioritize student safety and, and teacher support uh, was where I would start. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit curious, you know, since we've got, you know, uh, four of us here, I, I've already kind of declared that in Minneapolis right now, there is no policy, there is nothing that's board generated. Um, I'm kind of sensing from the, from the, from the three of you that that is also the case. Am I, am I correct on that? I'm seeing, uh, at this yeah, point, there's a lot no, of, there's no a lot one's of, got a policy, yeah. right? Yeah, there's a lot of discussion. There's a lot of change of practice. You know, I think that's usually how it starts. Uh, but when someone comes to push the envelope on these practices, we're going to need some policy to lean on um, and some well thought out policy. So again, equity, access, support is is there. Right. Yeah. John, it, it, there is no any no policy where you are right now either, correct? I'm sorry. I can't I can't hear you. Sorry. No, no, there isn't. And, and there's none nearby as far as I'm aware either. Okay. And James, yeah, I, I, think, I think I saw you going, no. <laughs> no, no, there's no policy, but I, I, I don't think the county would um, frame it as no policy. I would just say that their current policy embrace, you know, it, it's, it's broad enough to include AI. It's, I think that's how they would frame it. Um, but I don't think it's a it's an AI specific policy. Now, one of our neighboring counties, Frederick County Public Schools, um, I believe has, has put out a policy on AI. Um, again, I think, you know, districts are probably, you know, don't want to be premature, um, but again, trying to do something and right now trying to fit this, I don't know, circle peg in this kind of square hole is where we, we, we find ourselves. Um, but I, but I, I think they would say that they do have a policy. It's just not specific to AI. Yeah. I think what we're, what, what we're kind of in, in the, in what we're hearing, at least in many circles, is that it's 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 a broad, it's it's broadly being um, defined underneath the other policies, right? And then how do you fit that, as you said, square peg round hole, um, when an incident happens uh, with it with with a student or, or an adult as well? So, um, all right, well, obviously there's a great need for for something to be happening, and again, we don't want to be left behind in these in these policies as we um, navigate this as as schools and as districts. So. Let's, let's head to question number four here. Um, this is a big question, which which um, really kind of uh, kind of dovetails from the one that we just had um, about um, harassment, bullying, right? So how how can we use you know how can it be utilized to identify and prevent in this case bullying and harassment in schools and and what are those privacy implications which we know are going to exist in the area of technology um, and what role can AI play in detecting uh, those subtle forms of harassment? Um, and how it can be implemented without infringing on on students' rights. I, I am gonna I'm gonna go to to John on this because um, we had a, a an email exchange on this as well um, uh, about something that's happening in your district. And if you want to go ahead and start, John. Yeah, so it's not our district. Um, it, it is a district in New Jersey that is having an issue where um, you know the, they had a instance of of bullying based on. Um, fake pictures of of students that were posted and um you know the the district i think um you know took took what they saw as the necessary steps but i think the pushback was that it wasn't because of the uh long term ramifications of potentially having um x rated pictures of yourself out there right so we're we're not just talking about something that is in the now um which is bad enough in itself, right? In everything students have to go through in school currently. Um, but now you're looking at there's an X-rated picture, you know, of you that's not really of you that's out there, you know, for potential employers to find down the line for, you know, um, potential, you know, uh, relationships and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, you're you're leading into this territory of um, long-term uh, long-term repercussions of AI generated bullying. Yeah, and as you said, the, the effects of that um, can be long lasting, um, very long lasting. Um, I, you know, just 
just kind of kind of thinking about that, Brad, what are your thoughts on this in in what's happening in your building? Are yeah, there... so we you know we went to you know one to one district uh, as we were uh, in the pandemic. Uh, we rushed it out and what have you. And um, uh, one thing we've adopted is a program called Linewise. So this is a, a monitoring program that uses AI to flag inappropriate searches, pictures, those types of things. Um, so that has been really monitored by a district, but now it's coming down into the site level. Um, and so everything's captured, it's leveled, you know, by, uh, you know, from the worst thing you could see to just the kid, you know, using some profanity or what have you, um, which is great. But when you have 47,000 students or, you know, the 2000 I have here, um, it adds a huge layer to the administrative work. Um, and so that's something that needs to be worked out uh, because we just can't keep up with, you know, what what's going on every day here and the instructional leaders and, you know, um, keep the kids safe here. And at the same time, um, have everything, every keystroke monitored um, on our students. Um, that That's a lot. And so I think that's something um, that will need to be refined and looked at. I do know our boards are constantly and our district staff are constantly doing that. Uh, to ensure one student safety, but two also uh, the the uh, amount of work that that will take um, and liability, right? On um, if you don't get to something uh, that is student harm or uh, some of those unfortunate things. So um, there is nerves when it comes to uh, the job of administration this, these days to take on these tasks because they are just so quick, immediate, and Sometimes there's some really tough things that uh, that come up uh, with the digital use. So we're currently using it. We're seeing how it's going, uh, but it's line like L I N E wise. Um, we have a dashboard, so I can see and look up any device that is issued to students or anyone using a device on our network as well. So you can imagine how much um, traffic we can get. Um, so again, that's something that we need to be cognizant of. If, it's when we're going to do these um, uh, monitoring, it's great because we can help kids. There could be a kid who puts something about self-harm and we can get to them quick and get them help. And so there's all these positives that are just incredible. Uh, however, how can we monitor this 24 seven with staff members who are already stretched and tired and they don't need to be up at three in the morning. So I think there's some creative ways we can look at doing this in districts, um, uh, but we just can't, throw this on the lap of our, our current staffs without really looking at strategies. Yeah. And, and also, you know, even thinking about, like you said, really the, the administrative workload um, on this uh, and much of, much of, you know, and, and much is also occurring outside the school day. Um, and, and how is that impacting and bringing it back in too? Um, James, how about, how about from you? What are, what are some thoughts you have on what your work is doing? Yeah, when I was looking at this question, the first thing I kept thinking about is like, I'm, I'm taking, let me take some notes here because <laughs> I'm super interested on, on how this works as well. I, uh, I think similar to Brad, our district has a, a tool that monitors and flags and then reaches out to the school when, you know, again, if there's something about self harm or some potential for bullying. Uh, but to be quite frank, a lot of the things that we're seeing is not being used by the school tools not being used on like the school network or the school's email. That's what the school district monitors. What we're seeing is the non-school emails um, and obviously, you know, on these other platforms. And then we're hearing about it from students and then it's then blowing up and they're having, you know, legs on its, on its own. I'm not sure what AI tools, um, you know, really could be utilized in, under those circumstances. Um, but I, again, I know our district is using them. We they have not reached the level of Brad School where we, as as the administration, as the school, is actually the ones doing the monitoring. District is we do get emails from them, right? And my the sense I get is you know, again a program similar to to Linewise that sends you know flags it and then they send us an email and then from there we um, address address the student. But I, I will say that the, that's very, we get very few of those. Most of the, the 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 bullying and harassment issues that we're dealing with on the tech level is dealing with students' personal email addresses that cannot is not monitored by, um, or not on school devices or school emails. Um, and as a result, you know, we're just dealing with the the backlash of it and find ourselves 
oftentimes Monday morning after a long weekend of back and forth exchanges um, dealing with it. So, Yeah, more along the line, I, I think what you're referring to is more along, on the line still of Snapchat and text messaging and and, and other that, that are continuing to come to our schools. Is that right, James? Yeah, that, that is that is correct. Yeah. Um, but but again, I think our school district definitely has a position on and in, in implementing some tools around it. But unfortunately, um, the reality is most of the things we're dealing with and we have to deal with them. Right. Even though they are outside of the school's email address, because it's impacting what's happening in the schoolhouse. Kids are coming in at level 10 because something that was said digitally online and like you said, some Snapchat or. Uh, I, don't, I don't know X and I don't call it Twitter anymore. Uh, Instagram feed or exchange that they're having. So, yeah. Uh, any other thoughts you, that anybody wants to add on that um, on that topic? Just because it seems like a big one. Otherwise, we'll head to the next one, which is is uh, somewhat a somewhat of a, a bit of a different take on that same idea. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next one here. How might the use of AI to address bullying, harassment, and cheating affect the school environment and culture um, long-term? Um, kind of a flip of the last question. Anybody want to jump in on that one? Well, I'll jump. So the false positives and misinterpretations, I believe, um, like I talked about with cheating earlier, or maybe someone using someone else's device, like, hey, sign in real quick, why, you know, you're having a sleepover. Um, I think, you know, that can lead to just unwarranted, um, you know, accusations and interventions and really damage relationships, right, and trust in the school climate. Um, and so I, I'm concerned about that because, again, when, when we have false positives or we don't fully understand how these monitoring programs work or there's 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 something that happens where they're using a device but it's not the actual person and now we're you know intervening or punishing someone and it just there's a lot of um, fear and anxiety over that have I seen with students um, and parents I've had parents send me disclaimers in, in some of these um, AI detectors and say look they don't have enough trials yet they don't know the accuracy of this and um, and so I think the relationships can again be strained by uh, these mis you know these these um, misinterpretations and false positives. So something to be aware of. Great perspective, John. Uh, John or James? Yeah, I want to add anything additional to that. Um, yeah. Go ahead, John. You got it. So uh, talking from a school environment and culture part. Um, Quite honestly, I'm, I'm I'm fearful. Um, you know, I think I think if we if we put ourselves back in 2010 and 2012 area and we see the rise of of iPhones and and social media and uh high speed internet, right? And and then the introduction of those things into school, we all would have thought about how wonderful they were, right? And and anticipated all the things that it could bring. Um, into education. And I think while they have, um, you know, nobody's running to the car card catalog anymore. Um, at the same point, um, I think we all deal with the negative aspect of it as well, right? So everything we just talked about from, from cyberbullying and harassment to, um, it, we, we, we saw an increase in, in fights, in discipline, in cheating, um, academically. I guess my concern is, you know, I, I know us, we, you know, we're almost trying to go backwards a little bit, not completely, but, um, you know, we, we've banned cell phones. We've, um, we put things like Go Guardian on the computer to, to limit the space. Um, we we here have techless Tuesdays. We're we're back to paper and pencil and learning on a board for a day, um, because and and quite honestly, we've seen po positive effects from it. We've seen a reduction in fights and altercations and cheating and all those things as we have pulled back some of the technology from our students. Um, so I think again to answer a question, I'm I'm a little bit fearful. Um, while while I completely buy into all the wonderful things that AI might bring us, um, 
Uh, I'm concerned about where where yeah. it could have completely. So, Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. I, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was gonna say thanks, John, for for bringing yeah. that. I was gonna bring kind of a side point to that. And again, you know, I, I'm just not sure if AI is the tool we're gonna use to detect AI. I don't know if that makes any sense, right? Um, but okay. what's coming to mind is the, the thought that. Um, you know, really the best AI detector is a good relationship with your kid. And I think that's, I know that's a tall ask, but that's what we've done for many, many, many years <laughs> up until this point. Um, you get to know your kids, you know how they write. Um, I love this idea of Techless Tuesday, I have to write it down. And, and I'm, I'm a, you know, we're a tech magnet. So I give yeah. a Techless Tuesday is like, huh? <laughs> um, but <laughs> I'm still like, I love that idea, right? Uh, because I do think, and we have also encouraged our teachers to at times just close the computer, pull out a pen, pull out a piece of paper, and just write, write a paragraph, right? So, you know, we also strongly encourage, you know, again, these relationships. We want you to have relationships with these kids, our students, so you know who they are. Um, so, no, I don't I don't have an answer specifically to this question. I'm not also sure if the, the answer will be found, you know, we're using AI to detect AI, which is in essence what we've been doing. Um, I, I, I think we, we might need to think a, a little bit more out the box on this one, so. I, I just want to reiterate, because what, what, what was, I mean, all of the points in this last, you know, they bring up different, di kind of different ways to add this. And the thing I was thinking too was about student voice, which goes back a little bit to what you were talking about, James, about relationships, because in the end, we know that as principal leaders, how do we solve most of the problems that we have, even those that come to us on the Monday morning from, from our you know cell phones right now, we, we solve them typically by the relationship that we have with young people and the, and utilizing their voice, both, both in the positive, you know, and the kind of like, yep, I did that. Um, you know, I, I'm going to do better next time. Right. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're teaching young people those skills. And I, and I see us teaching in this area too, because the more we learn about it, right. The more we're going to be able to help and guide not only our teachers, but our students too. Um, so I just, I think that, that, like you said, this question isn't going to be an easy one that's going to be answered uh, by the by the panel in front of us. But I think having great thought partners um, and being able to continue to surface these things is what's going to um, help guide us uh, as we move forward. So, um, Mary, Mary, real quick, oh, thing that comes yeah. to mind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, please. Yeah, I said one thing that comes to mind is you're you're bringing this. Uh, I know we didn't spend a lot of time talking about how we as you know administrators or school leaders are using tech, um, but you know, when I think about the way in which I use AI, I think about the need to do something more than just use, you know, producing the text. So I'll just give you one small example that comes to mind for me. Um, one of the ways that I've used AI, and I've done it several times, you know, we're a restorative justice school. So we're, you know, we do spend some time when kids are having conflict, bringing them to the table to actually have some conversation and teaching them how to do that productively. Um, we also have had situations in the classroom that might impact the entire classroom, um, and then we need to reset the classroom. Um, so um, through our morning advisories, uh, we spend lots of time uh, doing community circles. And so our students know how to sit in circle and understand uh, a talking piece and things of that nature. So I've used AI. I remember one time we had a situation uh, where two students um, got into a physical altercation in the classroom, two students were removed. Kids were a little startled by it that was in the classroom. And on my way to the classroom, I'm thinking about how am I going to reset this classroom? On my way, I'm pulling out my phone. I'm on chat GBT asking it to give me questions, restorative questions to reset the classroom. By the time I get to the classroom, I have 10, 12 questions ready to go. So yes, AI gave me those questions, but I still actually had to do the circle. I actually had to pick which questions. I didn't use all 12. I used two of those questions to be able to actually reset the classroom. So it reminds me of the idea of using the tool, but the, the, there's still work that needs to be done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, connecting this idea that even when 
students are writing a paper, maybe using AI as their first draft, but still needing to do something more than just write the paper, a presentation, a video, um, using some other tool to uh, uh, you know express their understanding of, of what they've uh, produced um, through that tech. So um, I'm, it's the, thought, the thought is not fully formed yet, but it's, I'm getting close to the space where AI has a role to play but it is not the entire thing. And, and so I'm still kind of forming this thought around it. So anyway. I appreciate that. I mean, we still need us, right? We still need humans um, <laughs> in this case and 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 school leaders. Um, thanks for adding that, James. Um, Brad or John, do you want to add anything else before we move on to our last question on this? Any other thoughts? I think what you just said, you know, we still need humans. We need to start with that. I think this could be an opportunity for resurgence to focus on relationship building and actually how to do it. So I've done some writing on this and, and I just know it's the foundation. Every every effort I've done the last 21 years in education, when you get to the core of what we do, it's about relationships. And relationships, I think James said it, it was nice, just relationships will win this, right? Because if you know the kids, you know your staff, when, you, when we come across these challenges, right, we can work through these things and we can detect things that a computer won't ever be able to. Um, and so uh, I think, if anything, we should take this moment, not only to embrace it for the things that we're sharing about, but even to lean more into the importance of relationship building. Um, something we do at, at my school is a week of welcome, where we say no backpacks, no syllabus, and we focus on intentionally getting to know who our humans are in our room uh, and in our school, in the school. I mean, one thing we can do is model it, right, to help teach our kids. Look a kid in the eye and say hello, right? Just model being an adult and using relationships uh, to do that in your in your school building. Um, you can you can do a lot of that. So um, just it just it will win. Relationships will always win. John, last thoughts on this question? No, I can't say it any better than that. <laughs> really with those guys. We got brilliance in the room here. That's what we got. So our last question for today um, is what policies, and we talked a little bit about this at the beginning, but what policies should school boards implement to govern the use of AI in monitoring and addressing bullying and harassment? And what policies at the school and district level are necessary to safeguard against potential misuse and those security risks with AI? Big questions here. Um, any any kind of final, final thoughts on, on, on policy and the creation of policy? I mean, the thing that the thought that comes to me is just making sure that when these policies are created, that you have school voice, you have student voice, you have principal voice. So often these policies are made without us. So often we find ourselves responding to a policy that's been created. And I'm I'm hoping as, and I've been pushing in my district, anybody who's willing to listen that as we are trying to figure out what to do, please do not leave us out, those who are actually in the schoolhouse, and please don't leave students out. I think they need to be, um, they need to be a part of it. So that, that's, that's where I think I would put that. Great, thanks James. John or Brad? I just think, um, I think when we think policy, it tends to be very narrow um, and responsive to a singular thing. Um, I think at least initially with AI, it's going to have to be more broad um, so that it doesn't change before the first, second, third reading of a policy, um, you know, because it is happening that rapidly um, and then adopted and adjusted uh, as necessary. Okay, thanks, John. Final, final thoughts, Brad? I just echo what they both said. Um, you know, we can't top down. Um, you can't leave the actual end user out of these policies. So the feedback and the, the understanding. So uh, whether you're big tech or school board or government, right? You've got to get to the end user to really understand and especially our educators, right? We've, we've, we've had change before, but this is, a, this is a different type of change. This is, uh, this is definitely, you know, we've got the calculator come in, big fit and TV and those other things. However, I think AI just is a, is a and they probably said it back then, different level, but it really is because of the connectiveness and the learning that can happen. Um, so 
I would say training and awareness programs uh, and being able to listen to the stakeholders at the at the end user uh, before we create any policy that again, like John said, has to be revised. Um, because you know, a good policy has uh, has been made through thoughtful intervention and listening and understanding of, of the child's safety, teacher support, um, and all those things. Great, really, really great points. Um, really great points, especially talking about the end user. Um, I think that that's really what's going to make the difference in 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 how these policies are not only created but implemented. It it does make, bring me back to the to question I think one or two, which was was really talking about. Um, we were talking about how this AI maybe it's a different way of policy, um, much like AI is very different than anything we've ever experienced. But maybe 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 AI is embedded in policies versus an AI policy, right? Like how how are we going to be able to 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 weave that um, into the fabric of what already is written in in our in our school board policies and our building practices and procedures? So. Um, but focusing on again student voice, um, you know, uh, educator voice, and and that end user, I think is is going to be a, a really wise way to hopefully help us guide um, those that are developing policies. Um, I, I think Kim has um, Kim's put a, a, a question here that it's we kind of have moved to the question and answer part here. So if there is anyone that has any questions for the panel, this is a perfect time to ask. Um, I'll also take the opportunity to, to, to again, thank the three panelists um, for your great ideas today. Uh, it's been a, a pure pleasure for me to be able to moderate and, and, and even join in a little bit in the conversation. Uh, but are there any questions that, that we could um, have the panel respond to uh, with our Tech Talk today? So there have been obviously some great ideas shared today. Um, I do want to kind of um, pop it back to, to Kim to um, talk a little bit about some things that they that she's been working on. Um, and also thank you, Brad, for putting your email address in there. If um, John and James, if you do the same, um, that way uh, everyone who, who's watching this recording could also connect with you. So Kim, I'm going to pass back to you now uh, to, to, to finish us out. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Mary Pat. Thank you, everybody, uh, for being on the panel. Um, if you guys are non-members of NASSP, it just is another great, you know, organization that you should be collaborating with other admin to be able to get this high-quality conversations and have those different things. I will be in Nashville. I'm very excited. Um, it's literally downtown. So how great is that? It's in one of the greatest cities in a really cool space. So um, please, please um, make sure you guys um, give uh, them some love in the the, the chat. But um, one of my favorite things to give out whenever I see adults, but I'm going to give it to you guys virtually, is this is our, we call them, these are our adult humor cards. So um, they do have like beeped out words. Um, so like this one says, life is better with you. And the other side, it says, F, uh, you're an effing rock star, right? So it's just a, kind of a fun one to be able to give out to your staff if you want to print them up yourself. So that'll be your gift uh, um, as some adult humor because we have to keep education kind of fun, right? Um, and like they said, it is about building relationships, no matter what you have, if you're using GoGuardian, Bark, or like they said, the line wire, you need to build that. So that's where we come in as a nonprofit. We come in and train um, your students on how to be these digital first responders as we reference them. So they help help you, you know, talk about, hey, this is how people are misusing AI that be fake, because like, as John pointed out, like if that does happen in your school, that's going to be devastating and you can't have that back, right? So um, uh, on, on those different pieces. The one thing I was sharing with the panelists before anybody jumped on was we are working on policy. Um, let me actually just, just so you guys can show if anybody's interested, let me actually just show you kind of how, what I'm doing. Um, and then what we're doing is we're just teaming up with right now Missouri's admin association uh, because these are <clears throat> all the hot topics that every school is like, there's not, students do better when they know what the rules are. <laughs> And these are all the things that are hot topics, like the recording of fights, photos and videos in bathrooms and locker rooms. So if we don't have policy around this, students don't know that they're not supposed to be doing it, right? Um, what if they are doing any kind of fake outs, right? It can be AI or any kind of fake outs or the doxing where they're sharing their phone numbers and addresses. Like 
what admin have to do is they make up policy like, oh, disruption of school hours. They like make it up. Um, and so we're trying to get it where we're trying to get in front of it. So what the admin is doing is they're helping us, giving us guidelines of what could be, what poli what school boards could adapt. So if anybody wants to get interested in, um, you know, making their voice heard, there's an easy share document. We're adding more pieces into our uh, free social media emergency plan. So if you come down here, um, we have free template letters that we're trying to create. How do you have conversations with parents um, when this happens? If someone does get cyberbullying, how can we, like, have you ever been fearful to send a kid home um, because, you know, they have been cyberbullying and you give them no resources, right? So that's what we're trying to be able to create on that end. And the other ones are um, even making a social media team. So if something does go online, because I'm sure you guys have the Facebook Facebook pages, the Nextdoor apps, where they go on and talk smack about your school um, or your staff. And so that way you're giving the parents what they can say. Um, if they're like demanding answers online, <clears throat> you're teaching parents and even community leaders what they can respond since most times schools can't respond um, since there is a very form of command. So that's what we're creating on our end. So we'd love for you guys to get involved. Um, if you guys are interested, please reach out. This is making sure you guys are following us on our social media handles um, to be able to do that and reach out and through. So thank you again for joining us. We'll send all this out um, along with New York City Public Schools sent us their AI policy that they have. Um, we'll push that all in the notes, the show notes from this. Please share this to your other admin things. And thank you again to all of our panelists and, and ASSP for great and great partner for this um, event. And thank you again, Mary Pat, for being the great moderator. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Bye, everybody.